in the previous lesson, we made an action. Might not be your first. Actions have been around there for a long time, but it's our first in this chapter. Now, we never really applied it to the image we had open. We just made an action based on that image. But we have other images that we want to use this on because it would not make sense to make an action if it's a one-off. So I've got another image open. Go into your working folder and open up 161010.psd. Same type of image, same type of problem. Let's go into our actions right here, or you can go up to the word window and get it up there. There's Egypt. It saves them automatically. Click here, and there it is. To apply an action to an open image in Photoshop one time, go ahead and click it, and click here. If that's all we were going to do, this would be a short lesson. We could move on to the next one. But let's talk about it for a minute. We took about, what, a minute or two to do that first one, that action in the previous lesson. That wasn't really hard. However, if it's the first time you're doing it and you want it to be as good as possible, you might take a couple of minutes to make sure it's absolutely perfect because you're going to be using it over and over again. And you might have taken four or five minutes to get it right. Doesn't matter. It only takes about a second to make it work. I have actions that have literally 40 or 50 instructional steps. Took me a half hour to make it. Click a button, it's done. So the efficiency part is there, the consistency part is there, and that's really cool. We got time here. Let's take this a little bit further. Let's say we like what happened up to this point, but we would like another action that's similar to this one that takes it from there and moves it and does something else to it. Let's come up to Color Correction 1 and drag it down on top of the new icon. Let's double-click right here, and let's call it Color Correction 2. Now, I would suggest, if you have something very specific this thing is doing, Color Correction 1, 2, 3 doesn't really say much. You might want to be a little bit more descriptive when you give it a name. We'll just say 2 now, just to make it easy. So we have one that's exactly the same. That's fine. There it is, dot, 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 and you're done. Notice also that I left the document exactly the way it was after it did color correction one. It's important to remember that if you want an action to continue from that point, you want to start the original before you go to this next step. So we're going to come down here, select right there. I want this part of the action to start there. That's why I'm clicking there. I could start it up here if I wanted to. I'm going to come down here, go up to this button right here, which is options for actions. Lots of stuff up here, and just click Start Recording. We're back in record mode. Now, number one, I want this as part of this. I'm going to put them together. That's a permanent thing, but I'm going to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to this button right here, and I'm going to say Flatten the Image. Okay, it's got that done. Next, well, let's just do something to prove the point. Let's go to Filters. I love Filters, and go into Filter Gallery. And let me go ahead and come down here and go fit in view so we can see it. Now that one's called film grain. We've got all kinds of things. We could spend a half hour just playing around right here. Neon glow. Let's go back to fresco. Let's just stop here. Play around with the brush size. Maybe the detail. We like that. So we click OK. That's really all we wanted to do. So we stop this one. We can collapse it up here. If we come back up here into history and go back here and take it back to its original state and go back to actions, we now have two things we can do. This one stops at color correction. This one goes through the color correction and basically takes it a step forward and puts a filter on it. Let's double click here and let's take the number two off and type in fresco. That's what we're doing. Go ahead and select it and uh, click play. Took about, what, a second and a half? Not too bad. So you can create these things and use them over and over again. You can take them forward to another step by making a copy and then adding things into them if you change your mind. But so far, we're only applying these to one image at a time. So let's, in the next lesson, take this even further.